let's begin with the word of prayer i uh, would like to request someone to please lead us in prayer please Hi yes good morning Mangi Mangi would you like to lead us in prayer yeah, Good morning first yes oh yeah oh gladly yeah, please go ahead thank you okay. Heavenly Father we thank you this morning thank you for giving us opportunity again Lord so to meet Lord for for your glory and for you for the glory of your name Lord Father, we pray as we we learn about the local church, empower us, open our mind, open our hearts, Lord, to receive whatever knowledge and wisdom that you instructing us through Pastor Nancy. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. uh so trust that you're all doing fine and uh, uh the assignments how how are the assignments going are there any questions with regard to the assignments okay uh uh i'm not sure if you've started doing it uh yeah okay no questions no questions that's all right uh so if you do come across something please let me know you can post it on the stream page and i will answer that for us basically this is a simple format the first one for the online batch uh it's more like a quiz so as long as you answer the questions there some are uh, multiple choice some are short answers some are long answers you can answer it right there and uh, that should be it only when you're done please hit the submit button because after you hit the submit button you can't make any changes so that's the only thing um uh, so kindly keep that in mind and uh, this is the uh, first assignment there'll be one more assignment hopefully you know i'll post it by next week is what i'm thinking so you have sufficient time to complete the second assignment also uh, i i think it'll be due sometime by 19th of um november or earlier so you'll have enough time to do both the assignments and we'll be through uh with the uh you know the evaluation part okay so uh so far we have uh, learned about the different pictures that we have in the bible about the local church uh, and this gives us a better understanding of what the church is meant to be otherwise we when we look at church uh, the gathering things that we are used to uh, we may miss out on the deeper meaning of what this gathering is all about what the relationships that we have with people and uh, you know uh, the way god has set the church with the leaders and uh, uh, with with you know the elders and the congregation we might miss out on the a uh, deeper meaning of things and that is why we are studying this course and i trust that it will help us no matter which capacity we are uh, serving god at uh, capacity we are serving god with so uh, i uh, truly believe that you know we all will contribute towards the building up of the church the way jesus is doing it right now okay so in the last class we talked about the church the local church being the temple of god and we saw the purpose of a temple the purpose of a temple is to host the presence of god Be- without that the temple is just a building uh, the temple is just a structure uh, but we saw the importance of us inviting god's presence and being a people where god is happy to come and dwell uh, and i don't know if uh, any of you noticed this but uh, uh, at apc the service that we had last sunday uh, pastor touched on us hosting the presence of god uh, from uh, from psalm 132 you know the, the same section that we had studied uh, in in class so it was you know a refresher 
personally for me and i was really blessed by that so that's what we looked at uh, and today we are going to touch on a couple of other aspects of the local church the next topic here this is on page number 107 uh, is the local church as zion god's people now when we look at scripture hebrews 12 points to uh mount zion it points to the uh you know the the city god's people and uh, tells us that you know we we are those people we are god's people we are god's city um so as we look at the term that is used for god's people you now it is uh, mount zion and mount zion you know we are aware that it has its own significance in uh, scripture it was known as the city of david now it's not exactly jerusalem but you know it's close by but the significance of mount zion uh, is what we are um uh, you know going to um uh, like that is important it's not really you know the the place where where it is positioned it's not in jerusalem but um uh, mount zion has an importance and what does what does that imply for us as believers you know we look at that um we're told that as god's people uh, as zion uh, you know that that god calls us his chosen people he calls us his chosen people so there are a couple of scriptures which i think if we read we will have a better understanding let's go through hebrews 12 hebrews 12 verses 22 to 24 it's already there in our notes uh, so could somebody please read that the first scripture portion there hebrews 12 22 to 24 ma'am mary ah yes yes, ah, yes please yes please hebrews 12 chapter 22 to 24 but you are come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just just men made perfect and to jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of abel yes thank you thank you susan so now you uh, see here that uh, there there is a mention of mount zion and we are told that we have come to mount zion and to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels whenever we we um you know study things like this um uh, the tendency is to think that it's literal okay uh, we know that god generally fulfills all his promises in the spiritual first and then in the literal so when we talk about mount zion here the reference is to the spiritual mount zion which would be the church of the lord jesus christ so we are told that you know with the church of the first born registered in heaven um and that the lord jesus is the mediator of the new covenant that we all partake in and this zion or this people um these people are god's chosen people so again there is a reference in um, uh, the book of peter first peter chapter 2 where we are told that you know we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation and we are god's special people so zion is meant to refer to god's people not necessarily you know the literal zion will god fulfill his promises for literal zion he will but the fulfillment generally happens in the spiritual first so we are the spiritual zion we are the ones who have been bought with the blood of jesus and we are the ones who are partakers of the new covenant so the church is that zion that we are talking about okay in whom 
god is going to fulfill his promises and when we uh, look at the description that is given for god's people as peter wrote no we are a chosen generation we are a royal priesthood a holy nation we are god's own special people so these are all the descriptions for god's people and what is the um, responsibility of god's people we are called to proclaim his praises so what is the spiritual zion yeah, and also the true. natural zion supposed to do our responsibility is to fulfill um the promises regarding uh, i mean we will we will walk into those promises that god has made over us and uh, as we've seen we are here to proclaim the praises of god who called us okay uh, i notice that charles you have a question yes um yes, I, yes sir, charles thank you so much pastor um i'm asking about the replacement theology about mm. the church and and zion uh, how is it related when you are talking about this uh when does it come in how how does it affect or how can we avoid it in this that the church is now uh, part of zion thank you Yes, thank you, um, Charles. That's a very important question, and that's why I am saying that the promises of God for His people Israel, uh, or you know, other ways in which He might refer to His people Jerusalem, Zion. Uh, it's not that God is going to forget about His people. He will not, and we very, very clearly know that. Even if Jerus, even if God's people have turned away from Him, we know that God is zealous to fulfill His promises towards Israel, the literal Israel. Okay. Um, uh, I think he um, Romans eleven is is a is a good chapter to go through where we understand that you know God is still passionate. Um, uh, there is a scripture Romans eleven twenty nine where uh, God says that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable, meaning the promises that He has made over Abraham and his descendants, He is not going to take it back. He is not going to uh, change those things. So God is very clear that in the natural Israel, He is going to fulfill His promises. Now we have to wait for the unfolding of um, uh, events, uh, and you know, uh, as we study even the Book of Revelation, we we see how God is uh, His primary His. Uh, one of the main things that he's going to do is bring his own people back to himself. So um, while many people get saved on the earth, even during tribulation and all of that, the focus is Israel. The focus is his own people. So God is zealous to keep his promises and fulfill his promises towards um, Abraham's descendants. And that does not change. Uh, even when we study, uh, you know, about the end times, and we see the progression of how world events are, you know, beginning to take place. How there is a return of the Jews back to their land, and you know, um, there, there are many things. There are lots of things. So we can look at Bible prophecy and see how all those things are actually coming to pass one by one. Uh, so having said that, what we are saying is, yes, literal things will happen and therefore we cannot, what you talked about, you know, replacement theology, where there are a lot of people who believe that the church is that Zion, okay, and the, the natural Zion or God's people Israel, because of their disobedience and waywardness, God has forgotten his promises, uh, you know, uh, that he has made to the natural um uh, in natural uh, people like the jews and 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 the nation of israel so there are a lot of people who believe that and that's what we refer to as replacement okay but uh, we know that you know that is not biblical god is not trying to replace the church uh, he's not trying to replace israel with the church but there is a way in which god works and that way is that whatever promises have been made over Israel, the church now is the spiritual 
chosen people of God. Okay, we are part of the kingdom. We are born again. We are the family of God. We are the household of God. So we are that spiritual set of people whom God has uh, chosen. Now the promises of God, even with regard to Israel, they will be fulfilled in us first, and later on in Jerusalem. So that's how we look at it, uh, Charles. Okay. So both exist. The church exists. And the natural Israel exists. One cannot replace the other. God will fulfill his promises. Usually it is done spiritually first. Like I will fill my house with the glory. We are, we are the temple. We are, I will fill my temple with glory. So we can expect as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can expect God to do that in us first spiritually and then literally yes we will see the rebuilding of the temple we will see that temple being filled with glory all of that in a literal sense yeah so uh uh any anything additional to that thank you pastor thank you so much yes yes thank you Charles. so uh like we are not talking about replacement theology at all. Okay, So uh, we've seen how we are Zion and uh, uh, that our responsibility is to proclaim God's praises. So in that context, okay, uh, we will look at the church. The church is God's chosen. They're God's chosen people. Uh, their responsibility is to proclaim God's praises in this generation. So it's just as simple as that. Okay. Now, when we look at scripture, there are promises made over Zion. So based on those promises, we'll just try to understand, uh, you know, what we are supposed to be uh, uh, for God. So Zion, uh, many a time, it's used interchangeably with Jerusalem. We know that, you know, the places are different, but uh, the meaning, the essence remains the same. And uh, Zion was a stronghold. Okay, it was a stronghold for David. It was a place where um, uh, you know David set up his city. Okay, and uh, we find this Zion being uh, used in in various places. Um, and what God wants is that he, the way he related to the natural Zion, okay, he wants to relate with us the spiritual. Zion, uh, and uh, he wants to reveal that we are his chosen people. So when we talk about ourselves as the chosen people, um, it's it. The understanding is that we are set apart for God. Okay, chosen usually um, uh, has to do with things that are exclusive for something so uh, in the tabernacle we know that you no know, things were chosen uh, methods of uh, or preparation for worship was was set in a certain way and it was not meant to be used anywhere else so these are all kind of set apart chosen uh, if you want to use the word holy okay uh, uh, holy practices so when we consider ourselves as god's chosen people that would be the understanding that you know we are set apart for God, we are special for God. So uh, as we raise up a body of believers, a community of believers, we impart this understanding and let them know that wherever we are, um, and uh, no matter what the setup looks like, what the, what the standards of the world look like, we are a chosen people. Okay, or we are set apart for God, and our lives have to be like that. So again, you know, a good um, example will be Daniel and his friends who were in Babylon, who were, uh, uh, you know, part of that that team that the the king really wanted to raise up as as ministers, and they were together with other people. And we read about the various standards of worship, of lifestyle, you know, that people had during their times. But these four men, they lived that life of a chosen community or a chosen people. So it's about living differently with God's standards, being holy, being set apart for God. So we are God's chosen people. We are Zion. 
what else do we see about zion in scripture now there are other passages um zechariah 2 10 where god says sing and rejoice o daughter of zion for behold i am coming and i will dwell in your midst so what is god's promise to zion god said that he is going to dwell he will live in our midst that applies to us god's spiritual zion we talked about us being the temple now we can expect to host god's presence okay and that would be um uh, like a legitimate expectation and god is faithful right to keep his promises and we can always expect god's presence we can always expect you know him to be um uh, one among us and 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 be with us so we can expect god to dwell in our midst and also you know we see that you know scriptures tell us that he says that he is going to rule out of zion okay, there are other passages of scripture here i'm not going through all of them he's going to rule out of zion so looking at these passages you know as god's people we have to host god's presence and the way we said proclaim the praises meaning when god is glorified um, his rule and reign is first in us his rule and reign can be seen through us and that's the kind of people we ought to be and the kind of people that we need to raise up uh, so as to building the church that is something that we can bear in mind uh, we also see uh, in scripture that god promises to shine out of zion so uh, psalm 50 verses 1 and 2 tell us that god uh, declares out of zion the perfection of beauty god will shine forth again very similar to what we said proclaim the praises of god so as god's people there must be something different about us we are his chosen people he dwells in us um and uh, uh, you know he rules in us he rules through us and he shines through us so we must not lack um uh, that glory you know, that that god has that splendor that god is able to display through us now how do we understand this what we studied in the last class about what the glory of god is how does that look uh, in the old testament it looked like the fire it looked like the cloud it looked like um you know the heaviness right the kabod the uh, like the heavy presence of god it looked like all of those things in the new testament can it look like all of these things yes it can still uh, seem like a cloud and uh, the heat and so many different ways in which god's presence is manifested but apart from that you know god's glory is manifested in the works of god the supernatural works of god and we saw how jesus he carried his sonship glory and he revealed he revealed god's nature he revealed god's power through all the works of healing deliverance uh, and many other things that he did to bless people uh, to show his goodness to uh, people around him so similarly today when we say that out of zion god shines you know that can be a chapter in itself how can god shine out of his community so any community any local church in a given place has to shine the glory of god so when uh, let's say the people of the world look at the church they must commend the church for the supernatural works that are taking place in the church they must commend the church for the character that the people have uh, they must commend the church for the impact that the church is making on the uh, society so you know all these things because what's what's really happening god is dwelling in our midst god is ruling in our midst and god is shining out of us and that is what god has promised for zion and we are spiritual zion we are god's chosen people uh, and we can expect that now we can also talk about how um, you know the influences on the seven mountains the church can have that the church can uh, have people who are in full time ministry uh, and maybe others who are not called you know that they are in full time ministry but uh, even as workplace ministers we can shine the glory of god and god uh, is is 
more than happy to reveal um, his light to the world around us so in all these ways in all these ways supernatural works our standards our influence uh, on the world all these things will reveal god's glory and god has chosen us to reveal himself to the world okay what else uh, has he promised for mount zion uh, we see in obadiah obadiah 1 verses 17 and 21 it says but on mount zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness the house of jacob shall possess their possessions then saviors shall come to mount zion to judge the mountains of esau and the kingdom shall be the lords so god is promising that he will give deliverance on mount zion so there will be deliverance on mount zion and holiness so these are things that we can expect from god you know as god's people and it's really helpful especially when we are praying you know we are we pray god's promises over our lives we pray god's promises over our churches we pray god's promises over you know christian communities in in our city we can hold on to these scriptures because god said on my people there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness and he's also promising and he's saying jacob shall possess their possession so what is rightfully ours we can look at all the blessings that god has directed towards his people we can begin with abraham's blessings we can begin uh, you know we can then go on to the blessings of the cross the blessings of the new covenant and we can hold on to all of these blessings and say god you have promised in your word that jacob again you know there are all these terms that are used uh, in, in scripture uh, they refer in the spiritual sense to god's people now the church so jacob again it's it refers to us we can say that god uh, you have directed all these blessings to us so we will possess all our possessions uh, and and we can you know uh, engage in prayer we can engage in spiritual warfare and trust god for these things to be seen in our midst so what uh, in the section we are saying that god will provide deliverance in our midst he will um, you know grant us that grace to be holy and that we as god's people will possess our possessions or we will um walk in the blessings of god and that's what it means satan uh, can try his best to take them away from us and yet you know god's word says that you will possess all your possessions so uh we have a claim on the blessings of god the good things that god has released over our lives so as god's people you know we must be awakened to this truth and also speak it over people uh, in our churches so that they are aware you know it shouldn't be like um people don't know what they have as uh, as god's god's chosen people and uh, you know sometimes our attitude is like okay we we uh, can beg god thinking that okay god is not willing or god is not uh, uh, happy to bless us or make god is ashamed of us thoughts like that uh, but we see very clearly in scripture that you no know, zion was uh, a city that god was proud of god's chosen people and that's god's attitude the way he dealt with the natural zion is the way he deals with us now so uh, he accepts us he wants to live in our midst and he wants to shine out of us and he wants to grant us deliverance he wants to give us holiness and also uh, help us walk in all the blessings that he has given us now there's another verse about zion uh, this is in joel 316 where we read that the lord also will roar from zion okay so the lord will roar from zion it says what does that mean okay i'll read the rest of the passage also because it uh, reveals the victory of god it says and utter his voice from jerusalem the heavens and the earth will shake but the lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of israel so we uh, understand here that god is going to speak out of zion he will roar from zion and his voice 
will be released from jerusalem so god's voice or what god speaks should be in the church if the church fails to hear god's voice in the now then we are not you know living according to what he has already promised he's saying i'm going to roar from zion and i'm going to speak his voice from jerusalem so we as god's people should hear his voice in the now and uh, when we read the word roar you know it's it's like when a lion roars it's it's about victory it's about strength right and authority that um uh, is displayed through that roar and similarly when god roars it's a display of his strength it's a display of his power uh, and his roar is about uh, overcoming his enemies okay so in zion i know that we uh, talk about spiritual warfare and how we are constantly uh, in a in a place of battle on the uh, earth and uh, we must apply the victory that the cross has already given us and overcome everything that the enemy is doing this scripture you know adds to that and it says that the lord roars okay which means that his victory is so great and so real that it's like proclaiming declaring his victory he roars out of zion so as god's chosen people even while we are in battle you know we can we can sing of his victory we can proclaim his victory you know we can shout his victory uh, and you know we we can be firm in the fact that he has already overcome and we will soon see that in our lives in every situation you know, different aspects that concern us so these are all promises over zion and what we are doing is we are um, personalizing them to the uh, spiritual zion okay okay yeah mangi uh, mangi you have a question yes pasta yeah, um yeah please go thank you uh just i think um uh, similar to charles charles question uh because we have been made in, uh, into a new temple and the new testament uh belief it's not collective belief but it's it, it start uh it's in individual belief so you believe uh charles believe that tarun believe believe and then we come together we we form a church that's why uh but first of all it is a personal belief and it so when you, um i'm battling to 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 understand the whole concept of <laughs> of the new zion because the new testament uh, belief is personal it it is uh it is personal relationship with god and god speak through people people are in a relationship with him and then he said through you uh the belly uh through your belly the rivers of of life will, will flow or i think that's what it says uh the holy spirit will flow through us and then from individual and then spread spreads out so um but battling to understand the whole concept of of the the, the new zion and the church being yeah so is it the church is it individual person or, or is it the, the whole church thank you pastor i'm from ahmed yeah yeah clear. yeah yeah mangi thank you for that i'm um, uh, trying to understand so you're saying that um, individually we have faith in god and um, you know that makes us a recipient of the promises of god his presence and all those things um now that is settled uh, but uh, are you saying that when people come together everyone may not be on the same page and uh, therefore how is it that god will fill that place with his presence is your question something like that um and uh, no pastor um mm -hmm. okay I'm then sorry that, please tell me uh. yeah i'm saying that we are as an in individual person we are saved on on our own and mm -hmm. then because we are saved because we we walk with Christ because we have been born again and we we have been made into his temple 
we come together as a community uh, to worship him collectively. I think that's what the mm -hmm. church is. Or yes, some some get saved, come to church to get saved, and then they get saved into the church, and then they can they can move to other churches or from other community. So, and I'm, I know I know I might be wrong, but I believe that that's the fine. Church is a, is, yeah, yeah, it's a a community of believers who they personally walk with God. So even if 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 uh, God drops me in 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 the Amazon today because I if he, he is in me I'll be able to to preach and I'll be able to to raise other community there because I've I've got a relationship with him so is it out of this concept uh that we say we we are new Zion or is it the collective body of believer is the new Zion Thank okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mangi. I think I got your question. So you're asking whether this applies to individuals um, or to the body or the community. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it applies to both, Mangi. Yeah. So it applies to both. Um, uh, just this one verse that we read about uh deliverance there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness um at the house of jacob shall possess their possessions as an individual the scripture from obadiah one i can apply it to myself and it would be correct i can apply the same scripture for my uh church community you know some of us believers together i can apply the same scripture and say god you know we want to see your deliverance in our midst uh, we want to uh, walk in all the blessings of God. It would still be correct. So, nearly, I mean, all promises are like that. You can apply it to an individual and it would be correct. You can apply it to a community and it would still be correct. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because as an individual, we, you know, we are members individually. And when you are a citizen um, of heaven, everything, you know, all, all the, the benefits, um, uh, all the, um, you know, whatever, whatever comes through being a citizen applies to you, right? Um, so uh, even as an individual, we can claim these scriptures and promises and it is very much applicable to individuals as much as it is applicable to communities so yeah thanks uh mangi yeah so we're saying that uh we are zion and you know god's going to do all these things in us through us and uh it, it should be um, um like we must reveal god to the world around us god's victory will be seen through our lives his voice will be heard in our midst so basically look for these things in the local church if anything is missing we can pray and say god you know, your word says that we are zion so you know we are praying we are asking for for your rhema word to be present uh, uh, you know in our midst your deliverance to be here so that's how we apply it Okay, so uh, that's how it is. Now, one more scripture about uh, Zion. We see that uh, God promises strength. Psalm 110 verses 1 and 2. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. So God is sending forth his strength out of Zion. Similar to how he's going to give his presence, he's going to also give his strength. So we can look to God. We can look to God. And what? how does strength help? You know, strength, again, helps us uh, exercise our dominion. It helps us exercise our authority. It helps us overcome the enemy. It helps us uh, stretch ourselves to 
full capacity and engage in everything that god has called us to do so basically you know we are not a a, a fainting people we are we are a people who can rise up and uh, do things for god we can overcome the works of the evil one and be victorious so that is the, the understanding and we can pray and we can ask god to make us and our community like that so a, a, a couple of practical things that are mentioned here about um uh, us being zion is to bring this understanding to the people that we are god special people and therefore the culture that we have or the values that we carry they must be in sync with kingdom culture they must be in sync with kingdom values um and that way we will display like how daniel and his friends they were able to live that separate different life uh, they could dare to be different in the uh, uh, you know the usual world that they lived in so we can also be those different people living with kingdom culture and kingdom values today uh, wherever god has positioned us and we can also um, uh, impart this truth in believers that we are a chosen people meaning we are holy we are sanctified uh, we are a call to live transformed lives and this again you know this again is a is a reality and people will be able to live their lives uh, in this manner and be the testimony that god wants them to be so to impart this truth and help people understand how they are god's own special people uh, and to encourage people to uh, reveal who god is so when we reveal god what comes forth the greatness of god when people look at a believer or a christian or a community of uh, believers they must see the goodness of god they must see the greatness of god coming through you know out of these people uh, the virtues of god being revealed through that community or through those individuals so that is what is expected when we say that god will show forth his praises from among his people who are zaib so we can encourage and uh, you know everyone from a little child to uh, an elderly person everyone in some way or the other the way god has called each person you know we can be uh, that shining light we can be salt you know, we can be an influence uh, and proclaim the glory of god anyone who sees us anyone who knows um, the way god is working in and through our lives will glorify god they will rejoice and they will praise god so that's that is what is expected out of zion uh, and mm, we must see a release of the kingdom uh, because we just said that god speaks god dwells god roars god releases his strength out of uh, zion so we see his kingdom come in in uh, various ways uh, and uh, that is how the local church is supposed to be so what can be some of the challenges that we face you know when we talk about the church being zion uh like every other every other picture of the church you know uh, there can be people who find it challenging to accept this truth because accepting this truth that we are god's people and that uh, uh you know we we are here to reveal god would mean that certain changes have to come into our lives no uh that we must aim for maturity we must look for progress uh we we must be ready to stretch ourselves you know it means all of those things because without that without letting god work in us uh, there's no way we will be in a position to reveal god so when we teach uh, things like this not everybody will be receptive and in fact some will some could be upset that you know it's about making changes and, and uh, it's just easier to come to church and do church and uh, you know uh, just listen to the word and go back home and that's about it but when we are asking people to live a life where they uh, know that they are the chosen people and god is going to reveal his glory in all these ways through their individual life or their family uh, it it's it can rock the boat 
for uh, some people who are comfortable with you know what we call as status quo christianity okay so that is uh, an issue uh, but yeah as we keep speaking the truth of god's word and i've said this earlier when we proclaim the truth right that's the first step uh, to take people on a journey you know uh, uh, on uh, along that truth I, if people do not know what the word says no then they will never know how to make that journey so uh, speak the word impart the word teach from god's word uh, and uh, eventually you know and hopefully people will respond and they will be ready to um, be that display of god's glory and splendor so zion it's just that we are here to display god's glory and splendor so i just leave this uh, time open if at all there are any comments from us Ah uh, yes, yes, Charles. Please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Shed more light on uh, there is on the challenge that, however, as pastors and leaders, we have no choice but to preach and teach. Why is it that we don't have any choice? Uh, your question, Charles. Uh, you're saying that. we have to preach and teach okay so yeah that that is fine uh, so what what exactly is the question there i am i i i am looking at the challenges to be prepared for mm -hmm. and the, there is a statement that says however okay from the status quo mm -hmm. however as pastors or leaders we have no choice but to preach and to teach so that people will be transformed by the renewing of the mind why don't we have a choice why why do we have no choice but to preach and teach okay so uh yeah charles thank you uh, i um we see that is the way in which the lord jesus sanctifies his body okay in ephesians 5 we read that he sanctifies the church with the word um and even jesus you know in john 17 he says that you are you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you so the word does a cleansing work in the hearts in the lives of people so unless we proclaim the word you know that process will not be uh you know brought to completion which is why there is no other choice there's no other way you know um we could we could think of just motivating the people or giving them a, a a comfortable environment where they can come and gather where we encourage them you know to follow these these principles but at the end of the day if the word is missing then the work of sanctification will not take place and similarly we also understand that the holy spirit does his work uh, in the life of every believer spirit soul and body uh, and that again is a work of sanctification so as a pastor or a leader we are here to lead the way uh, but we are also catalyst we must understand that we have to use um what god has given us to bring about the change which is the work of the word the work of the spirit without the work of the word and the work of the spirit um people's hearts you know will will not experience change and yes from their side uh, they have to be willing um, uh, and they have to be open to the renewal of their own minds so they make their journey but our approach is always proclaim the word okay declare the truth make it clear and then it begins to work in people's lives so in that sense yes there there is no alternative or as you put it there is no choice uh, but to take this route to see a change yeah uh, did i answer your question charles thank you pastor 
uh, I take long to answer because I am in me when I'm on mute but I'm thankful that Oh, oh okay. It is, we are following a command. We are following a command and uh, when a command has been given and uh, you do not need any other call but you are already commanded so there is no choice it's a mm. command we are two because mm. we have been commanded by uh, our master our leader our commander so thank you so much pastor okay yeah sure yes thank you thank you charles uh, and i also think that uh, we've um, touched 951 so let's go for a short break we'll come back and we will continue uh, on the subject of the local church so thank you everyone see you in 10 minutes a uh, 1001 is when we will come back and start again thank you <laughs> 